All right, so today what I'll do is I'll go ahead and um, begin the uh, second session. And this document was sent out yesterday, if you've registered. Um, if you still need the document, um, please contact uh, Chris Griffin, and he can send this to you. Uh, so yesterday I went over session one, and today I'm going to start session two, where I'll talk about assessments and uh, I'll attempt to get into the third party platform integration um, uh, today. And if I run out of time, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and work on that tomorrow. Uh, but yesterday's session, I started to populate my um, SOBA 203 course. And what I did is I just basically built uh, the skeleton um, to add, to start adding my assignments. So uh, as I mentioned yesterday, there's a modules page and the modules page is, is actually all you really need to have your class up and running in Canvas. Um, you don't really need to go anywhere else. Uh, you can build your modules and add everything into your modules from this modules page. By default, the modules page again is the page that the student will go to um, and it will be linked to the home page. But as I mentioned yesterday, you can actually enhance your Canvas course by creating pages, uh, which are in a, in a sense, they're, they're basically web pages um, that you build using what Canvas calls the rich text editor. Okay, so this is the rich text editor here, and it's like any word processor, except you could add links to your course, or you can add documents or media files, or really anything that you could really put on a web page. you could put here in the rich text editor. Um, and the rich text editor is available not only in your pages, but also if you're building an assignment or a quiz, Right, they all provide this rich text editor that you can go and put instructions to the quiz or instructions to the assignment and add a bunch of other elements that you would like to in that area. Um, but pages is really what it's most useful for because this is a way that you could create a welcome page like I did yesterday and link it to your home page. So when the student comes to your course, instead of just seeing the modules, Maybe you can have a short introduction like I have here, and you can add a link to your syllabus file, which I did yesterday. And I even had a link here to the modules page, just showing that it can link to any other section of your Canvas course. Okay, so, um, so then what I did is in the modules page, I basically just put a, a few of the uh, headers that I put within my weekly modules. And again, how you organize your modules is totally up to you. I do it in weeks. Okay, so each week I give assignments, homeworks, quizzes. Uh, I distribute slides. I give reading assignments. So I like to put those in each of my weeks. Um, you could have it completely different. Maybe you want to do chapters in the textbook you're using. Maybe you want to have um, different modules for the different types of assignments that you assign. However you want to do it, it's up to you. But again, I do it in weekly modules this way. Okay. And all I did within my weekly modules yesterday is I added uh, headers to each of those uh, assignment types um, and, and um, um, slides and readings that I assign each week. Uh, now, I went a little bit ahead yesterday because I had a little extra time at the end where I went ahead and created an assignment and I just called it a homework assignment. And I just want to mention that anything that you add to your modules, you can also add using the links here on the left hand side. So, for example, if I click the plus sign next to the week two header all the way here to the right, this says I want to add an item to my modules area. And if I click on that, you'll notice where it says add, it says you can add an assignment, you can add a quiz, you can add a file, you can add a page, like my welcome page, you can add a discussion thread. And I just added some text headers yesterday, but all of these coincide with 
what you see here in your left side navigation menu. So you could go ahead and add an assignment like I did yesterday, and you can create an assignment here. Or alternatively, you can go to your left side menu here and click on assignments and add an assignment here as well. Either way is fine. But like I said, you really don't need to leave that modules page <clears throat> to add an assignment or to add a quiz. Okay. Uh, yes, Susan, you have a question? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sure I was covered yesterday. Okay. I had some snafu getting into it. Um, where do you click to make where you had the page with your picture and name and everything to be on the class? Is that on the home page? Yeah. So uh, basically, there is a, a link here on the left called Pages. Okay. Right. And um, when you first go to Pages, though, you will not see this. You're going to see just a blank screen that looks like this without the welcome, of course, because I added that yesterday. <clears throat> so. Okay. If you click on the plus page button in the upper right corner, this will allow you to add that page. And so once you add the page and, and so if I hit plus page, you'll allow me to put in a new page here. Okay. And I'll just quickly just put, this is a new page. And this really doesn't, um, I'm not gonna put this in my course, but just to demonstrate. So I have new page, this is a new page and I save it. Okay. And then if I go to view all pages, right, here's the new page. Okay. And then if you, and then first thing you need to do is publish it before you can really do anything with it. So if you click the not sign, this will publish the page. Okay. And then if you click the three dots, it will allow you to use it as front page. And so whenever you see the three dots, you'll see that a lot in Canvas. That's always a menu for that particular item. So if I click on the three dots, if I say use, use as front page, then what it does is it allows me to assign it as the home page. But before you can assign it as a home page, you have to go to the home page first, click choose home page on the right hand side. Right. And then yes, so you go to home first. Click yeah, I'm choose, at home. Click choose home page on the right hand side. Oh, the right hand side. I see student. Okay, student view module progress. Do I have to click the dots to get choose home page? No. So um, w once you click on home, right now, if you never set a home page, when you click on home, it's going to look like your modules page, right? Right. I've got but a module up. Yeah, but you should still see this menu, these buttons here, these series of buttons on the right side, where it says import existing content, import from Commons. Do you see those buttons? Um, and that's when you click the three, I see commons favorites. When I click the three, I can't see on the screen where you're seeing the choose home page. Oh, okay. Did you click the home link here on the left? Yes. That's, and okay. I have a module up. I see collapse all view progress module and there's three dots. I don't see a choose home. Oh, so you don't see this on the right hand side where it says course status, published, unpublished, because that should be on your home page. Okay, wait, hold on. Maybe, maybe it's not scrolled over all the way. Uh, oh, wait. Okay, I see choose home page. I found it. So click yeah. choose home page. Yeah, so you click on that and then you want to select. Now, by default, it's going to say course modules. That's right. why we see all the course modules, but you want to select pages front page. Right, and as I long as that. you yeah, as long as you put the three dots and you said make this front page, that should yes, be the there. page that appears here. Mm -hmm. Okay, I click save. And okay. that's it. And you may need to click home again just to refresh it, but then it should show up as your home page. Um, I still have all that stuff from the right. Um, so you still see the modules when you click home? No. Oh, okay. So as long as you chose that home page, when you click home, that's what you should see here. Right. So what I did is I chose my welcome page. That's my pages front page. I click save and then my welcome page shows up in my, when they, when I click on home, that's where the welcome page shows up. Okay. It's interesting. Cause I just put welcome as the welcome page. Now, when I go to it, it has introduction to philosophy, the matrix, metaphysics, morality. It doesn't just say welcome, but maybe it named my welcome page or something. Uh, but is that the page that you built? 
No. <laughs> and oh. I have it. It shows up under choose homepage. I see the pages front page and the word welcome, which is mm -hmm. what all I've populated in the welcome page. Mm -hmm. But then when I press save and I go to home, it, you, it has you something see it else. So, so what I'm thinking is, is that maybe a page you built in Blackboard? Maybe. Right? If you're oh, working, maybe. yeah, if you're working from your Blackboard import course, if you created a content area in Blackboard, then it will be converted as a page in Canvas. So okay. I'm thinking maybe you did that in Blackboard and it kept it as a welcome page and kept okay. that name and then you just assigned it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, I don't want to dominate discussion, but. Okay. Well, I, I, I can return back to it at the end and um, you know, you can share your screen if you have to and, okay. and we could do it that way. Uh, Michelle asked how to, how do I add an exam in a course in Canvas that was in black? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to show you that, uh, Michelle. Uh, the first thing is you have to uh, just note that anything you did in Blackboard uh, was converted to um, Canvas under the name of BB Import. Okay, so the first thing is you, you want to make sure you have that BB Import course. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, you can, if you wanted to, you can work from this BB Import course and, and build the course in there and then copy the whole thing over to your fall 2021. Or you could, um, you can just copy over just sections at a time. So, and, and I'll show you how to do it that way. So if you have a quiz, you could just <clears throat> bring the quiz over to your Canvas course. And, um, and the good thing about um, Canvas is the, the conversion process is it does actually keep the quizzes intact from Blackboard. Okay, so I will uh, show how to do that um, in one second here. So, uh, so that'll be the next thing I do actually. So if I go back to my modules, so here is the homework assignment that I built yesterday. This is not a quiz. This is just an assignment that I created. And I guess I'll go ahead and just quickly cover how I did this um, for those that weren't here yesterday. Um, so if I go back to my modules, okay. And if I click on the plus sign, now the first thing that comes up is add assignment. And I can say create assignment from here and call it something. This one I'll call in class assignment. In class assignment one. Where it says indentation, I am going to indent one level because I do have my headers there, which are not indented. And then because this is going to go over, go under one of those headers, I'm going to indent it one level so it's easy to read. Hit add item. And here it is. So here's my assignment. Now, of course, what I need to do is I need to edit this to set up the type of assignments it go it's going to be, to uh, give it a due date, an availability date, and whatnot. So to do that, I just click in the in-class assignment one here, click on the link. And in the upper right, so here is the assignment. Again, there's nothing here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and it even says no additional details were added. Because when you do add it through the module, all it does is basically give it a name. So now what I need to do is click the edit button. And now I can add all the details. So it does have the name that I put in my module. And now under here in this rich text, uh, rich ed content editor, now I can put the details about the assignment. So I'm just gonna say, this is the first in class assignment. Okay, and then I give it points. Okay, so I'm gonna put, give it a hundred points. The assignment group, actually I do wanna cover assignment groups first before I create an assignment. Um, but I, I did create an assignment group yesterday called assignments. I'm gonna create assignment groups for everything else as well. So if you have assignment groups set up, um, you can go ahead and select that. Actually, I wanna say that the assignments assignment group is the one they give you by default. And since that's the only one I have, I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. I could actually create a group from here. And that's the nice thing about Canvas, as I mentioned yesterday, is 
there's so many different ways to do the same thing and they make it very convenient because for example if you don't have an assignment group yet you don't have to go to the assignment section to create that group you could do it right here when you're building the assignment so maybe i'll do that so i'm going to say create group and i'm going to create a new group called in class assignments Okay, so there it is. So I just created a new group. It is very easy. And I'm going to categorize this under in class assignments. Uh, display grade as points. Okay, so it's going to display it as 100 points if they get full credit. You can also do percentage, so it's 100%. You could do a letter grade. You could do complete or incomplete, which is either full credit or zero. Um, I'll just keep it as points. That's fine. Automatically, when they submit this and I grade it, it's going to go into the grade book and be calculated toward the final grade. But if you do not want this calculated toward the final grade, you just click this checkbox and it won't do it. Submission type is how you want them to submit the assignment. There's a no submission. So if you're not requiring them to submit anything, you can choose that. There's also on paper, which which basically creates an assignment and a place in a grade book that you can grade the assignment, but they don't have to submit anything online. So if you're collecting this in the classroom on paper, uh, you can go ahead and still have the assignment in Canvas and then grade it and put the grade in Canvas. I'm gonna go ahead and say online and the online options are a text entry. So they basically get a text area that they type in there their uh, submission, or they can put a website URL or a media recording. I think mostly, right, uh, I would think you would use text entry or even file upload. So if you want them to upload a Word document or a PDF, you check that. And you can even restrict the file types that you want them to submit. Now you'd have to know the file extension. So if it's Word, right, it would be doc or docx. Right, which is the late new uh, extension for Word, uh, maybe PDF. You don't have to put the dot. All you have to do is DOC, DOCX, and you do have to put commas between them. They give a little example here at the bottom of what's accepted or how you can write it. Okay. And then the allowed attempts is how many attempts they get. Uh, you can do unlimited or you can have a limited amount and then specify the number of attempts. If you have groups, I'll show how to build the groups tomorrow. Um, you can make this a group assignment. Again, groups are usually built using the people link on the left, but just like anything in Canvas, if you wanted to create the group from the on the fly, you can do that here as well. You can require peer reviews. Okay, if you have uh, students that are reviewing other students' work and you can manually assign those peers, you, you can have it automatically assigned. Uh, the peer reviews are only available to students that have submitted the assignment. So if you do peer reviews, they have to submit their assignment before they can peer review someone else's. And the peer reviews cannot be graded. Only the uh, original submissions can. Um, this is just a checkbox if you want to do anonymous grading. So when you're grading, if you don't want to see the student name, make sure you check this. And this is where you would assign it to a specific individual or everyone. So maybe if you want to extend it for someone, you have, you know, first assign it to everyone and put your due date. Okay. Also put your availability date. Remember the availability date is when they can see it and the due date is when it's due. You can leave the availability dates blank, which means they see the assignment all the time, but the due date is when they have to get it in by. And if you have a student where you maybe have given them an extension, just click the add button, select that particular student and then give them their own due date and availability date. Okay. All right, I think there may be a question. Are the media recording submissions, pre-recorded videos, or audio, or students create them, uh, students, are, or ones that students create themselves? Um, I believe it's, um, let's see, if we click on that, I think it's, it's a good question because I haven't used it, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's just any media file they would be able to, to up, we can try it we can click on it and see what happens let me let me go ahead and I, I was just wondering if um, 
so my students would submit videos of themselves. That's their that's how they would submit assignments. So I'm assuming that would be like a file upload rather than a media recording. Uh, that's that's what I'm thinking too. Okay. That's, um, that's what I thought. But uh, let me go ahead and and just try it. Um, that's the nice thing about this student view. You can click on the student view and just say, okay, let's see how it's going to look for the student. Okay, so I'll click on this. And here it says media, so they're gonna get a media button. So this is the upload because I, I still have that checkbox for the file upload. You can, you can do more than one, but this is media. So let's see if I click on this. Okay, it says add media and it allows me to either record or upload. So it does have a record tab. So you could record it, it looks like uh, during the um, uh, during the submission or if you have it backed up, you could go ahead and, and select that on your computer. There you go. So you could start the recording and then record your, you could use a webcam or a mic. So that's pretty okay, neat. Okay, so that's probably like, um, they had that ability in Teams to go ahead and submit it directly into the, um, program, or they could upload a file that they yeah. created from on YouTube. They had posted it on YouTube and then, and then upload that whole file. So uh, that's good to know. I just don't know how much space is available on that. Yeah, I'm not sure either. That, that's <laughs> another good question. That's probably I'll more of a to, question for IT. I experiment with that. Thanks. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so this is, this is, uh, so this would eliminate the need for having to do it through Teams, um, right? If they have this capability here. That's my hope, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, how do we edit the order on the left? Okay, and delete the ones you don't need. Yeah, so that was um, something I went over uh, yesterday, but I can review it very quickly. Um, so to do that, uh, Susan, what you would need to do is go into your course settings. The course settings you'll find all the way here at the bottom of your navigation menu on the left. So if you click on course settings on the left and you go to the navigation tab, the navigation tab will show all of the links that you have available here on the left. Now, the ones on the top, or if you were to read the instructions here, it's a little confusing because it's it makes it sound like the ones on the top are the ones that the students can see and the ones at the bottom are the ones that are hidden from the students, like it says. But honestly, there could be some at the top that the students still do not see. So for example, they're not gonna see lockdown browser. They're not gonna see attendance, right? These are only for the instructor. Um, but in any case, what you wanna do is anything that you would like to show to the student, you typically would be on, put on the top here. Anything you wanna hide, you can just click and drag them and put them here at the bottom, okay? And, to, and also to change the order, just click and drag and release um, on the top. And that will change the order to the links here on the left. And then don't forget, there's a save button down here at the bottom. It's hard to see it because it's all the way hidden. But if you don't click it, you may not see the, the links that you set up and you'd have to go back and do it again. So just remember to click that save button. And then that's where you'll have your links. And just to make sure, yeah, just to make sure the students see what you int intend for them to see, if you click the student view uh, button in the upper right corner, this will show the navigation menu as they see it. And then leave the student view in the lower right corner to go back to your view. Okay. Um, for allowed attempts, if you select one, does that allow the original submission plus one submission resubmit? Uh, um, no, I, I think that's just one submission, uh, Elizabeth. So when you say allowed or limited and you say one attempt, then they just get the one. Um, so yeah, so that, that you wanna do, uh, make sure you just put one submission if that's all you want them to submit. Okay. Okay, so now if I go back to my modules page, okay, I have my uh, homework, I have my in-class assignment. These are just assignments that they can submit through, through Canvas. So now the next, oh, okay. So now um, here's one thing I wanted to show is the assignment groups. Okay, assignments groups is pretty important because it's a way that you could, uh, that you're welcome. 
It's a way that you could, um, in a sense, set up your gradebook. A lot of the things that you had to do in the Blackboard gradebook, which in my opinion was very unintuitive, um, you can do through assignments and don't even have to touch the gradebook. So you can set up what percentages you want to give each assignment type. You could drop the lowest or however many lowest or highest assignments you want to drop. And that can all be done through the assignments page. Okay. So now by default, they're going to give you a group called assignments and any assignment you add is going to go in this assignment group. Now, if I go to my syllabus, which is the, um, oops, let me go ahead and open it from here. So this is what I'm working off of. So in my syllabus, I have these assignment types. So I have in-class assignments, homework, quizzes, and then I have exams. So what I'm gonna, and they all have a, a weight associated with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and create these as groups in Canvas. Okay, now notice I don't have anything that's just called assignments. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep the assignments here, but I'm gonna rename it to in-class assignments. Oh, actually, I already, I already have in-class assignments. So let me make this one the homework. Okay. And, and this is where you could also decide how many lowest scores or highest scores you want to drop, or which maybe you don't want any an assignment to never drop. You can put that here too. Okay, so now I have two. I'm going to add another one. Oops, I'm sorry. I added an assignment. Let me cancel this. I want to add an assignment group. So I'm going to hit the plus group button. Okay. And this one I'm going to call um, quizzes. Okay. And I'm going to add one more and call it exams. Now I didn't create any assignments in these groups yet. I just want to have the groups in there so I can now adjust my weights. Okay. Now when I want to go ahead and put the weights in here, I'm going to click on the three buttons up next to the plus assignment button. And I'm going to say assignment groups wait. Okay. I'm going to click the checkbox. This is wait final grade based on assignment groups. And here for the homework, okay, I'm going to put 30. For in class, I put 10. And I'll put 30 for the others. And I'm going to click save. Okay, and it will tell me what percentage of total now each of this assignment, each of these assignment groups are. Okay, and whenever I create an assignment, it's going to give me the option to categorize it in one of these groups. Again, if the group isn't there when you create the assignment, you can create the group on the fly. Just remember to come back to your assignments page on the left so you can add the weights. Now, the nice thing about this is if I go to my grade book, if I click on grades, it will show me, right, a homework average column. It'll show me an in-class average column, quizzes and exams. These are all things I had to set up manually in my Blackboard grade book, even when I created groups in Blackboard. Here in Canvas, I just go to the assignments area, I create the groups, and it takes care of the rest when it comes to the averaging and the columns that I see in the gradebook. So that's a really nice feature. Okay, so now what I can do is add a quiz. Now, uh, Michelle had a question about quizzes that may have been um, from your Blackboard course. So there are a few things I wanna show. Um, I I'd like to show how to create a quiz from scratch. And also I, I'd like to show how you could use the quizzes that you had in Blackboard. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show the black, how to import the Blackboard quiz first, because I think most of us have used Blackboard. We have our quizzes in there and we'd like to bring those over. Now, um, I actually did not get the, the Blackboard import for this course. Uh, they did give me a Blackboard import, but it wasn't the right one. So I don't have, any previous quizzes in a Blackboard import course, but I can just bring it in from another course. It's not, not a big deal. Uh, can I use assignment groups if I use points for each assignment rather than percentage weights? Um, yes, so 
the 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 assign what the assignment group will do is it will um, give you the percentage. Well, basically, you set it up saying this is going to be the percentage of the final grade, um, and it will give that based on points. So, for example, let's say your homework is a thousand points. If you set it up as a group and they earned 900 out of 1,000 points in that group for homework, it will show 90% for the percentage weight. Okay, but see, now, what, I'm asking, what I'm asking, Bill, is I don't, I don't use percentages. I, my homework is 200 points, my quizzes are 200 points, and then I just add everything up at the end and the whole course is worth 1,000 points. Got it. So could I use groups? Would it just give me a running total? Yeah, so, an average? so you can use groups, but it, I, 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 but the group by default gives you the average. Okay, that's what I was asking then. Yeah, okay. and, and, and that brings up a very good point because um, I had an issue with this in the summer. The issue is if you use a third party platform, I guess this is a good time to mention it. If you use a third party platform, like I use Cengage MindTap, by default, the third party platform, at least my third party, MindTap, uses points, has a point system. Um, if you integrate with Canvas, if that integrates with your grade book, even if you tell Canvas you want to show the percentage, it will still calculate based on points. Mm, okay. So, so that's something to be careful about. So what I had to do to fix that is I had to go into MindTap and because MindTap would just say, okay, this assignment's two points. This one is 10 points. And when it came over to Canvas, I would just say, well, I'd like it as a percentage. So if they got two out of two, I want to show hundred percent. And, and then when I calculated the final calculation, it used percentage and that's how Blackboard works. But Canvas is different. Canvas will actually, even though it shows it as a percentage, these averages, the homework average, the in-class average, the quiz average, will still average based on points. So it will show, it will always show that percentage, Martha, from my understanding, okay. but it will show the percentage based on the points earned. Okay. So I don't know, again, um, I could look a little further into that because I, I, you know, some of these things I haven't experimented with, but from my experience with the gray book, when you create the group, it will always show as percentage. So if they if they got like 190 out of 200 points, it will show that percentage rather than 190. See, and what I'd like it to do is show the 190, not the percentage. But we can talk yeah. later about that. I don't want to take all this time, but thank you. Okay, sure. Yeah, I mean, there's there's different settings that we could look at uh, for that. But uh, again, I, uh, I I like to use percentage, but that's one thing I did notice is that by default, it did calculate by percentage. And that threw me off of it because when the assignments were coming over, they were actually point-based and not percentage. Yeah. So, okay. Um, sure. All right. So let's go to the um, modules page one more time. And what I'd like to do is, um, okay. So I wanna now set up a quiz and let's just say it was in a previous Blackboard course. So whenever we want to import our, now Blackboard is gone, right? I think even if you try to go to Blackboard now, it brings you to Canvas. Uh, so the only thing we really have to go by are those BB import courses that they gave us, that OLED provided to us. So if we want to um, copy anything over from those BB import courses, we first have to go to our home page. Okay, so if we click on home. I'm going to bring your attention to these buttons on the right hand side again. And there is a button that says import existing content. So whether you're copying, let's say you, you went and you created your whole course in BB import, and now you need to bring it over to fall 2021. Whether you're copying over the entire course, or even if you're copying over sections, it's done the same way in Canvas. And it's go all through this import existing content button. So I'm going to click on button? I'm, I'm it's looking. on the right hand side. Um, and if you're having trouble seeing these buttons, you may need to scroll to the right. I think Susan, you had that issue. You had to scroll. Um, right. So if your resolution is different, it may be. Um, all right, I see it. 
Yeah, you may have to scroll to the right. And these will always be on your home page. So if you need to find these buttons, always go to the home page first. And we say import existing content. Okay. And the first thing it's going to say is import content, content type. And if we're bringing it over from now, again, Blackboard's gone. So we can't import from Blackboard. So we're always going to import from another Canvas course, which would be the BB import that, that OLED set up for us. So we would say copy a Canvas course. So again, whether it's one assignment or assignments or the entire thing, you're always going to say copy a Canvas course. Okay. If you have a third party platform, which I probably won't get to today, so I'll show it tomorrow. But if you have a third party platform you're working from and you like to use their test banks to import into Canvas, what you need to do is you need to um, download their test bank and then you may want to use one of these others. Usually with Canvas, it's QTI um, zip file. But again, right now I'm just going to focus on existing Canvas courses that used to be Blackboard courses. So we'll say copy a Canvas course. Now it's going to say search for a course. And if you click on this down arrow, it should show all your courses. Okay. And if it was a Blackboard course that you'd like to bring the quiz from, choose one of your imported courses that are prefixed with the BB import name. Like I said, I don't unfortunately have anything in the fundamentals of marketing and technology. Um, that was blank for me. So I'm just choosing one of the others because I have quizzes in these other ones. Um, I'll go ahead and choose. Um, I'll just use programming for analytics. Okay. And these quizzes in programming for analytics are essay quizzes. So, which is what I show in that guide that I that we distributed. So I'm going to show you how you could go ahead and import an essay quiz. Okay. Now this is the key here where it says content. If you're copying over the whole thing, you want to say all content. But if you only want to copy over a quiz or just your quizzes, check the select specific content. Now in Blackboard, if you're familiar with this functionality in Blackboard, when you click the select specific content, it will actually show you all of the content in your course that you can then select from. And that doesn't happen in Canvas. In Canvas, you hit select specific content first and then click import. Okay, if you want to adjust events and due dates, you can do that. So um, for instance, if you, you know, if you have it set up for last semester's dates and you want to change it to this semester, you can shift the dates. Uh, I don't do this, um, but this is an option. Okay, and then we click the import button. Okay, now it will say when you click the import button, if you said select specific content, it's waiting now for my selection. And then I have to click this button. And once I click this button, then it shows me everything that I have set up in, that I had set up in Blackboard, okay? So you will see that there is a link here to quizzes. And if you click the arrow, it will expand that and show each of these quizzes that I have set up in that course. Okay, and I have a lot of different quizzes because um, every assignment that I created in Blackboard, I created as a quiz because I like to use the code to access it, which was only available in the quiz assignments in Blackboard. But here are my real quizzes, chapter one and two quiz, chapter three quiz, right? So I can check these and it will import them. Okay, I'll only check the first one for now. Okay. You'll also notice if you use pools of questions like I did in Blackboard, your pool questions will come across as question banks. So what I like to do in Blackboard is I have pools of questions. So for instance, this particular quiz uses C, and I, I name them this way, CH2, Q4. Um, it's a little disorganized, but I have a CH2, Q1. So this is like chapter two, question one. And I'd like this to go on my chapter two quiz. And in this particular pool, I had three questions 
and each student had one of those questions chosen randomly. Now, if you're importing the quiz, it should bring over all of those question banks that you had set up for that quiz. So uh, I, I'm not actually gonna select the question bank because I'm expecting it to bring over all the question banks that I had loaded already in the chapter one and two quiz. So I'm just gonna select the chapter one and two quiz for now and click select content. Okay, and you'll see a progress bar go across here. And now it's completed. Of course, the more that you, um, that you bring into the course import, it's going to take longer, right, to go through that. Since I only had one quiz, it was pretty quick. Okay, so now if I go into my quizzes link on the left-hand side, I will see that chapter one and two quiz. My chapter one and two quiz has three questions, okay? And it had those three question banks that I used for those questions. Now, the question banks are a little hard to find in Canvas. So if you wanna see the question banks, you do have to go into quizzes first. So you click quizzes on the left, and then you click the three dots next to the plus quiz button in the upper right, and you say manage question banks. Okay, so there's no direct way to get to your question banks. You have to go to quizzes first, click on the three dots, go to manage question banks, Okay, now actually I was mistaken. It did not bring over my question banks. I thought it would. So I probably do have to bring those over too. Let me see what the quiz looks like. Let me click on the quiz. Okay, it shows me. Okay, it came over as three points, which is wrong. So that was, but let me edit it and just see if my questions are here. So if I click edit, Click the questions tab. Okay, my question groups are not available. So I misspoke there. I actually did have to bring in those, those, those question banks, but that's not a big deal. All I need to do is go back home, go to the import existing content, copy a Canvas course, programming for analytics, select specific content, import, select content. So I do have to go to the question banks and I will choose um, chapter two, question one, chapter two, question two, chapter two, question three. Okay, so there are my three questions. I do have a question four. I guess I'll copy that over just in case, even though I only have three questions on the quiz. Okay, and let me select that. Okay, it says queued. Okay, so it's completed. Okay, so let me go back to quizzes again. Click on the three dots, manage quiz question banks. Okay, here they are. Okay, you can click on these and it will show you the questions, and they should be exactly the way you put them in Blackboard. Okay, so this is how I set them up. Now, here's one of the, now if you use essay questions like I do um, for your quizzes, and in Blackboard, there is a place when you create an essay question to put the correct answer. And I always put the correct answer in there. I don't show the student the correct answer. But I do like to put it in there because when I grade it, I like to see the correct answer to kind of compare it to what they're doing. And then I give them, you know, a little some feedback as to what they did wrong. For some reason, essay questions with correct answer, when they get imported into Canvas, um, the correct answers go away. And um, so notice I don't see the correct answer here. This is not apply to multiple choice or, or any other type of question. Those correct answers come across. Essay questions, if you have correct answers in your essay questions in Blackboard, they're gone in Canvas. Okay, so if you did that, hopefully you had them backed up somewhere and not only in Blackboard, okay? 
Now, there is a way to put in the correct answer. And um, to do that, you have to click the edit this question button. And notice there's a little like um, area down here for general comments. You can put the correct answer in here. The problem is this is not seen as a correct or incorrect answer in Canvas. This is just seen as comments. And if you put the correct answer here, the students will see it. Whether you say show the correct answer or not, when it comes to an essay general answer comment, it's always going to be shown. So that's something that I learned over the summer. So just be careful about that. Now, if you said, well, I would really like to have that functionality in Blackboard the way it was, where I could put a correct answer or an incorrect answer, and I can have the option not to show them that if it's an essay question, you can still do that in Canvas, except you'd have to create a question as a new quiz question. And I'm gonna discuss the difference between the old quiz and the new quiz in a second. But by default, everything from Blackboard comes over to Canvas in the old, or what they call classic, as a classic quiz, okay? So if you had a quiz in Blackboard, if it imported into Canvas, it becomes a classic quiz in Canvas. One of the drawbacks of the classic quiz is if you have essay questions, you will lose the correct answer. If you wanna put it back in, like I'm doing here, there is no way to hide it from the student. Okay, so that's bad news for those of us that had essay questions and um, in Blackboard and would like them to behave the same way in Canvas. Uh, it will not, okay. So, okay, but now if I go back to my actual quiz, chapter one and two, okay, and I click edit, and I go to my question tab, okay, it still did not bring over the, the, the group. So I'm gonna have to reset these up, okay. Um, but that's okay, because I brought over the group. So I can do that now, okay. So uh, now if you did multiple choice, those of you that use multiple choice quizzes, because I did say at the beginning, the quizzes should be intact. Um, that's true for multiple choice. So if you have multiple choice, and if you're not using pools, okay, then everything will be fine. If you use pools, then um, and then then you're going to have an issue. Okay, those pools looks like it does not carry over into our groups. So what we need to do now is it says this question group is set to pick more questions that are available. Zero questions are available, and it's picking one. So now what I need to do is I need to make sure that this is associated with the question group that I would like it to choose from randomly. So for this question group, I'm gonna hit the pencil icon and I'm gonna click the update group button. Oops, I'm sorry. That did not work. I'm sorry, it's not the pencil, it's the plus sign. I'm gonna click the plus sign. Here we go. Okay. Now here's where you can add your questions, but actually I have it inside of a group. So I'm thinking I'm actually gonna have to do this completely different. Okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to delete these. And I'm sorry, Michelle, I know this was your specific question. I don't know what type of quizzes you use. But if you use essay quizzes using pools of questions, then yeah, you're probably gonna have to follow the way I'm doing it here. So basically what I ended up doing is I just deleted all of those question groups because it looks like I'm gonna have to pull them in again. So let me start from the beginning. So if you're creating a quiz, you can hit the plus quiz button. I imported a quiz, it didn't import the question. so. It's as if I just created this quiz and I called it chapter one and two quiz. And if we create a quiz, it will take you to this page. Okay, so I called it chapter one and two quiz. Here are the quiz instructions. Again, it's a rich content editor. So you can use it the way you would any pages, um, page that you created. This is the quiz type. 
Uh, I'm making it a graded quiz. You can make it a practice quiz, which is just like setting up any other quiz, except it does not get put into the grade book. Okay, and it doesn't count toward their average. You can also do a graded survey or an ungraded survey. So I'm gonna do a graded quiz. This is the assignment group. Okay, so I imported this assignment. Whenever you import an assignment, it's going to create a new assignment group called imported assignments. It's gonna put it there. I'm gonna change it to quizzes. And remember, these are the groups that I created prior to going into this homework in class, quizzes and exams. I'm gonna change it to quizzes. And then you have some options. You can shuffle the answers if you want the students, this was a multiple choice and you wanna get different answers in different orders. Uh, this is where we set the time limit. If you have a student that has accommodations that needs additional time, I will show how to do that, but you can only do it after you set up the quiz and published it, okay? So for now, this is the time limit for all students. Again, you can allow multiple attempts here. Also, you can keep the highest score, you can keep the average score or the latest. Um, you can put in a number of attempts that you want to allow. Let the student see the quiz responses. Okay. Will it submit automatically if timed? Yes, it will. It does submit automatically when timed. Okay. Uh, let the student see quiz responses. Incorrect quizzes will be marked in the student feedback. So this is if you want them to see the responses. Um, again, this only applies. Oh, okay. So then if you click this and say, let students see the correct answer, this only supply applies to those questions that have correct and incorrect answers. So this particular setting does not apply to the essay questions. Essay questions have feedback it's not necessarily correct or incorrect. So it will always show that to the students. So whether you check this or not, but if you want them to see correct answers, you can have a certain date or time that you want them to see the correct answers. So yeah, I want them to see the correct answers, but I don't want them to see it as soon as they submit it because then they can take it and send it to a student that's still taking it. So maybe you want to show it after everybody completes the exam and you can do that, okay? Um, you can restrict an access code. From my knowledge, this is the only type of assignment that allows an access code. So if you want to give them, let's say, an in-class assignment, like I do, but you only want them to be able to do it in class, even if it's not a quiz, still make it a quote-unquote quiz so you can give it an access code. Okay, that's usually what I do. Filter IP addresses. This is if you're giving a quiz, let's say in a lab somewhere at Stetson, like a computer lab, and those computer labs are have specific IP addresses. In other words, I only want them to take it on these computers. Uh, you can use this. Now, if you, now this, you'll probably have to contact IT and let them know, hey, um, I'm giving it in this lab and can you please give me the IP addresses that I can filter by? And then the assignment is the same as what you would do for um, um, for your just any assignment, right? Uh, give it a due date, give it an availability window, and you can even add specific students if they're taking it at a different time. So if you have, let's say, an athlete that can't make it to class due to a game on the travel schedule, you can add here and make them take it at a specific time. Okay. And that's it. And then we're going to save it. Okay. Oops, I got to set a due date. Um, I'll just put anything here. Due date cannot be before the car course start date. Oh, this. Oh, we're in 2021 now, aren't we? Okay. Good. Okay. So now I have it set up in terms of the scheduling. Now I need to add the question. So I'm going to click edit. I go to questions. Okay. And you'll see new question, new question group, and find questions. If you are just giving everybody the same questions, you can click new question. Okay. And then you can decide what type of question you want to assign them. Multiple choice 
true, false, fill in the blank, multiple answers. You notice with multiple choice, which is a default, it does have a correct answer and it has those incorrect answers you can put in. Okay, most of these types of questions have these. And as I mentioned, the essay question does not, all it has is a feedback. So that's why when you say show them the correct answer or not, uh, during the summer, I said, no, I don't want them seeing the answer, but they still saw it because this isn't necessarily a correct answer. This is just feedback for your essay. Okay, so this is how you would create a essay question uh, or a, um, I'm sorry, multiple choice. This is a multiple choice question. And this is where you would put your responses. So the correct answer would be answer one. And then you can put a possible answer, which is not the correct one. Answer two, add another. We'll just have three options. Okay, we'll say done. Update question, okay. So now I have a multiple choice question on my quiz. And that's if you say new question. So if you're creating a question from scratch, you click that. If you have a question, now, if you wanted to create a question group, that is a group of questions that could be chosen at random. You can say, create question group, I'll call it group one, say create group. And then now here is where you can add your question if you hit the plus sign. So, you know, this is the question, this is a multiple choice question within my question group. So I can have, let's say three multiple choice questions and then the group will choose one at random, okay? So that's how you use the group. But if you have a question group already that you imported like I did, you can say find questions and this is my first question, chapter two, Q1, which was a pool of question, a question pool that I had in Blackboard. And I can assign this to a question group. Now I can create the group here. I can call it group one. I'm gonna pick one out of these questions and I'll just call it, I'll just say 25 points. Create the group. Okay, add questions. Oops. Hey, hey. Group one, and I forgot the deuce. Actually, I spelled it completely wrong. And I actually forgot to select the questions in that group. That's why I have an empty group, but it's okay. I'll do it here. So I'm going to say add question to this group. No, that's not what I want. Sorry. Let me cancel that. Um, okay. All right, so what I needed to do here is I needed to hit the pencil button. So hit the plus button if you have brand new questions you wanna add, hit the pencil button. And, oh no, that's if you wanna change this. Hmm, so if I wanted to link it, I guess I'm gonna to have to do it from scratch again. Yep. Okay. Let me delete the group and do that again. Cause I, okay. So I'm going to do find questions again. Okay. Chapter two, question one, let me select the questions I want. Create the group. Group one, choose one question, create group, add selected questions. Okay. This is what I wanted. All right, so I have group one, and it's gonna choose one of these questions at random for the student. Okay, so now I have a quiz with a multiple choice question and an essay question. And I'll save it. Okay. And if I preview it, now I should see a multiple choice question. Okay, this is my multiple choice question where I have my three answers I could select from. And this is my essay question where the student will read it and put in their response. And then they submit the quiz. And that's it. Okay. All right. So I'm a little over time. I can go a little bit more into this tomorrow. But just to recap, 
if you have a quiz from Blackboard, which it's just a standard quiz, it doesn't choose any questions randomly from any pool, it should import just fine into Canvas. If you have a quiz that did have pools of questions, it looks like those pools of questions will not carry over with the quiz. So you will need to import, you can either import just the pools of questions like I did, which are now called, by the way, question banks in Canvas. So import your question bank and you may need to rebuild that quiz kind of like the way I did it here, um, which isn't bad. You just have to go ahead, create the quiz, make sure you have groups and pull those questions into those groups. And then um, that's how you'd have to do it. So unfortunately, um, uh, the, the, the quizzes that have pools of questions do not convert uh, as seamless as, as I thought. Um, only the quizzes that have a standard amount of questions that everybody gets will convert uh, successfully. Um, so hopefully that covers enough for Blackboard for Canvas quizzes. If you're creating quizzes in Canvas, if you use a third party platform, I'll show how we can import those questions tomorrow. But are there any questions with the um, with the uh, Canvas quizzes for today? Again, now that I have this quiz. Um, the first thing I want to make sure of is I'm going to go into assignments and just make sure the, the quiz is under the right group and it is. Okay, so it's under my quizzes group. And then I want to go to modules. And I do need to add this quiz. So I go to quiz. Here it is, chapter one and two quiz. I'm going to indent add the item and now it's under my quiz for week two. The other thing I'd like to cover tomorrow is the, um, the difference between a classic quiz and a new quiz. If you create a quiz from scratch, you will notice the first thing it's gonna ask you is do you want a classic quiz or do you want a new quiz? Again, the classic quiz is the way the quiz is going to come over from Blackboard, okay? So if you want to create a new quiz, um, what you need to do is convert the classic quiz to the new quiz that came from Blackboard. And that even adds some more issues, unfortunately, um, if you want to use the new quiz. Honestly, the classic, you can see the difference if you click on this link. There's not much difference between the classic quiz and new quiz. They really have the same type of questions. They, they all have essay questions. They all have multiple choice questions, um, uh, true false questions. They're all there in both types of quizzes. There are some things that the new quiz does better. For instance, if you have an essay in a new quiz, you can have an incorrect and correct answer, um, which you don't have in classic quiz. Another nice thing about a new quiz is if you need to extend time for a student, which by the way, I will show that. Um, but if you need to extend time for a student, if you have classic quiz, you have to do that for each individual quiz, okay? If you have a new quiz, you can actually do it for one quiz and it will carry over to all the other new quizzes that you build. But again, you do have to build the new quizzes or convert the classic quiz to a new quiz to get a new quiz to work. By default, the Blackboard will come over as a classic quiz. Um, quick question, it, uh, if you want to extend for a student, you need to click on the quiz. It does have to be published first, okay? So you wanna make sure you publish the quiz first. When you publish a quiz, it has a link that says moderate this quiz on the right-hand side that will show up. You're going to click moderate this quiz and then you will see the list of your students, okay? What you want to do is click on the pencil icon for that particular student to change the, you can either change the number of attempts or you can add extra time, okay? This extra time that they're getting is in addition to the time that you set up in your quiz. So because I set up 60 minutes in my quiz, if a student needed, let's say 100% extra time, you have to put an additional 60 minutes. So this is in addition. So you would not put 120 minutes, 
you would say an addition, additional 60 minutes. Okay, and then you save it, and then that student will get their additional time. Okay. And again, you do need to do that for every quiz that you need to give them additional time on. And that's for the classic quiz. If you do the new quiz, which I'll show tomorrow, um, you could set it up for that student in, in, a, in one of the quizzes and it will carry it over to the other ones. Will we have time tomorrow to talk about doing classes on Zoom? Uh, I hope so, Martha. Um, I do have that in my guide, so I do plan to talk about it. Um, so um, I'll do that. I'll talk about that later in the session. And if I go over time, I'll be happy to spend the additional time to talk about that. The one thing I will say about Zoom, uh, Respondus, yeah, I'll, again, I'm, I'm, I will try to do the Respondus also. Uh, that also is in the guide as well. The one thing I will stay, say about the Zoom meeting is in Blackboard, we always had to set that up manually. In Canvas, they give us a link right here on the left. So it's automatically there for us. And if you're familiar with setting up Zoom meetings in Blackboard, it is the same exact way we do it on Canvas. So if you click on the Zoom meeting, the same app opens up on the right-hand side. So this is no different than what you would see in Blackboard. The only difference that we have is they actually give us a link on the left, which we didn't get in Blackboard. But if, if you haven't done it in Blackboard, if you're not familiar with it, I'll show you tomorrow how to do it in Canvas. I have two sections of the same course. They're labeled the same in Canvas. Uh, can I change the course title to include a CRM or a meeting time so I can distinguish one section from another. Um, good question. If you needed to do that, that would be in settings under course details. So here's the name of the course. Um, so Valerie, I'm thinking you're referring to the actual course name. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't look like they Bill, may I, may I answer that one, Bill? Because I actually know how to do that. Yes, please. <laughs> um, on the dashboard, on the course itself, in the upper right-hand corner where the three little dots are, click that and hit nickname. Oh, okay. And then, then what I've done is just, you know, section one, two, three, or what I do with mine is I actually put the date and the time you know, Tuesday, Wednesday at 10 or Monday, Wednesday at three or something like that. So that way you can distinguish which one is which. Very good. Thank you. You're so Great. welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. And it says here, Bonnie says, I figured out how to do that by clicking on the hamburger menu. Uh, now, hamburger menu, I know the three lines. Um, is, are you referring to the, the three dots, Bonnie, at the hamburger menu? Or is there another one somewhere else? Is there another way to do it? Okay, maybe Bonnie doesn't hear me, but um, no, maybe yes, she. Yes, it's just it's just as she described. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Dots and, and change the nickname. And okay, that was great. incredibly frustrating until I figured it out. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So this uh, Bonnie called this the hamburger, and and maybe that I, I always I to me the three lines were the hamburger, not, not the three dots. But maybe well, this is a hamburger I assume, too. I assumed it was the same notion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Yep, it probably is. But uh, but yeah. So th this is an important icon. Anytime we see this in Canvas, it's it always will bring up a menu um, for that particular item. But uh, but that's good to know. That I did not know because I didn't. Um, it does okay. I'm going to cancel that because I actually haven't taught multiple sections yet. So yeah. thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? I know that I went over the quiz pretty quickly, and unfortunately didn't behave as I expected it to. So hopefully that didn't add any confusion. Um, but if you have any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, we can meet back tomorrow at ten o'clock, and and I'll continue going over that.